Hello, how are you doing? And once again, I come to you with the video to um, help you understand AI because, yeah, I think we all need to learn new stuff every day. So, what is AI? AI stands for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence that means that you have natural intelligence, which means that naturally. When we talk about intelligence, we all think about human beings, talk about some animals being a little clever, some monkeys and all that. But really, what is artificial intelligence? That's the intelligence of machines. In other words, we are allowing a computer or a machine to think for us. Let's think about the accident that happened, with the Ethiopian Airlines. Remember that the airline, the plane was actually being controlled by a computer. And then the computer was making mistakes, you know, and then the pilots were also trying to do their own bit and it was more or less fighting with them. So artificial intelligence is about using computers to make a decision on their own and learning in the process. Are you okay? So uh, that's my simple definition of what it is. So the definition, what is a branch, what is artificial intelligence? It's a branch of computer science named artificial intelligence. It pursues creating computers and machines as intelligent as human beings. In other words, it can work on their own. Think about robots. The father of intelli artificial intelligence is known as John McCarthy. It's important to know because he started thinking, well, on publishing officially. He made, he, he brought it out, made, made us all aware of that term, artificial intelligence. But how did he define it? He defined it as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines especially intelligent computer programs. Okay, all right, so there you go, AI, what can it do? And why do we need it? AI can learn through data. In other words, all we need is data. Give me data, just let me know. You went out, you came back in, you went out, you came back in. Okay, computer has learned that you can go in and out. You see that then AI can teach itself. That way it's learned that if someone is doing that, it means it's going out, it's coming back in. AI can respond in real time, in other words, Artificial intelligence should be able to now make a decision based on input data. AI achieves accuracy. Well, yeah, that's subjective anyway because you have autonomous cars. As you can see, autonomous cars, well, as of now, has not been really been accepted world everywhere because of some of the inaccuracies. So, yes, that is subjective. AI can organize data to get most out of it. Obviously, yes, we can do that as well. Now, smart systems can be built. How do you understand intelligence? How do we understand it? Smart systems can be built. And you understand that we can build systems that can think. We need to understand the concept of intelligence. We need to understand what it really is. Are you getting that? All right. It's not just knowledge, really. It's about knowing what to do. Are you okay? Intelligence goes a little beyond knowledge. Are you with me? Just getting to know what is there and what's available. We should be able to construct another intelligence system like the brain. In other words, if you're trying to create something that looks like almost perfect, like I know what I'm doing right now as I'm speaking to you right now, okay? So what is intelligence? Yes, intelligence is the ability of a system to calculate, to reason, to perceive relationships and analogies. Are you okay? Learn from experience. Are you okay? Store and retrieve information from memory solve problems, comprehend complex ideas, use natural language fluently, classify, generalize, and adapt new situations. Are you okay? So um, if a system is able to do all this, then it's intelligent. So in other words, you can have someone who is foolish, who's not intelligent. You, know, you can have a kid who is not, so we have what we call an intelligent quotient, blah, blah, blah. That means that not everything, every, every human being is even that intelligent. Okay? So what does it mean? It means that if you want to, talk about intelligence, then it should be the ability to reason, it should be to calculate. One plus one, if you tell me it's three, there's something wrong here. Have two oranges, add them together, how many do I get? You know, so there you go. With intelligence, we need to be able to do a few things. We need to be able to memorize. Memory is part of it. Analogy, yeah? Create, understand relationship. Okay, this is to the left of that, to the right of that. So let me avoid to this and go for that one. Are you okay? That's what it's about. Types of intelligence. Yes, yeah, different types of intelligence. I play piano. You may not have an idea, but you may be that good with your computer. You may be that good with what you do. 
Okay, so as described by Howard Gardner, the American developmental psychologist, intelligence comes in multiple linguistic, okay, speaking, musical, music, logical, mathematical. Some people are just good with calculation and all that. X plus one equals to two, therefore, are you okay? We can have spatial intelligence. That's also got to do with spaces and uh, geography. Are you okay? Where things are and etc. How do we manipulate and traverse over space, etc. Bodily kind testing people dance you people are not good with dancing are you okay that kind of knowledge is also there interpersonal there are people who are leaders we're talking about leaders they understand how to really kind of uh, relate to people and therefore get them you know doing things okay? that's interpersonal all right so reasoning learning problem solving perception linguistic intelligence that's what intelligence is made up of are you okay reasoning reason learn Problem solving. I said anything short of this, that's not intelligence. All right. So problem solving. It is the process in which one perceives and try to arrive at a side solution. So yeah, how do you see it? Okay. Mm, you know when people do that, that means they're thinking, they're trying to find out. Okay, how am I seeing what I'm looking at? So you're just looking at things, it's not good enough. You should be able to understand what is going on. Why did the apple fall from the tree? All right. From present situation by taking some parts. So in other words, let me go over this again. It's a process in which one persists and tries to arrive at a desired solution from a present situation by taking some path, which is blocked by known or unknown hurdles. Well, talk about hurdles, you're talking about obstacles, you're talking about are you okay, uh, blockades, are you okay? You're talking about restrictions, are you okay? All right. Impedances, are you right? Tra how do I traverse uh, traffic when there's a lot of traffic in peak time? How do I get through it? All right, so uh, that, that's problem solving. Okay, all right, perception is the process of acquiring, interpreting, selecting, and organizing sensory information. So, perception is, is, is how you perceive. So, brain does that for you naturally. Perception pres presumes sensing. So, if someone cannot really sense or smell something how can they perceive are you okay in humans perception is aided by sensory organs so like i said we are using our senses to, to perceive are you okay 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 i can hear a noise coming okay so i can perceive are you okay so i can acquire and interpret and select and organize so okay all right okay that means there's a bear chirping i'm hearing that that's perception in the domain of ai perception mechanism puts the data required by the senses together in a meaningful manner in other words ai can never work without senses so take note of that perception now what's involved in ai artificial intelligence is a vast area of study machine learning take note of that logic is part of it section is part of it go on google and you search Part of it, machine learning, machine takes a lot of data, computer takes a lot of data and then interprets and try to find a trend and say, okay, I see this. Are you all right? Okay, artificial neural ne networks really try to mimic how the brain works. Okay, genetic algorithm, yep, knowledge representation, but these are just broad areas in artificial intelligence, but it's worth noting that. Application of AI is to gaming. Are you okay? When you create creating a game, it's not all traditional coding sometimes you have to use some artificial intelligence because the game object or character has to move in a certain way and make decisions so all that if you say you are going to go by the normal traditional way of saying if then do this if then do this it may not work but we'll talk about that later on how that approaches them expert systems okay expert system have been existed for years. I actually artificial intelligence too has existed for years. But expert systems talk about a doctor, a computer doctor. So the doctor is the computer. Think about it. That's the expert system. So you say, okay, headache, pain, temperature, then it tells you, okay, suffering from malaria. Vision systems, vision, vision, vision systems, speech recognition, handwriting recognition. Okay, have you realized these days that things that used to be very difficult are now easy? Like when you speak, your Google Assistant can easily interpret the words that you just spoke. Google Translator is able to just translate your words. You can speak and it turns it into characters. All that is some form of intelligence, artificial intelligence. All right, intelligent robots. Let's go into the robotics. We all know 
robots are trying to talk. They look very funny, but you know, it's an effort so, towards something. And okay, cognitive modeling. What is that? Simulating human thinking. That is what cognitive modeling is about. The cognitive is about thinking. Are you okay? So now, how can you repeat? Okay, what do? How do humans reason? Okay, door is locked. Okay, that means you have to open it. Things like that. Cognitive. All right. But then that brings us to two keywords: the agent and the environment. In cognitive modeling, we we'll look at agent and environment. And who is the agent? The agent is anything that can perceive its environment through senses and acts upon that environment through effects. So I mean, this is very easy to understand. The agent is anything that can perceive its environment. It's just through senses. In other words, I need to just get. My ear, come my nose, some come my eye. I'm ready. I'm good to go. So I'm an agent, and then I, I work in an environment. Are you okay? So there you go. How? So that's funny, isn't it? How to get an agent? One we one. Uh, we go. We go to that course. Not yet. Okay. Agent. A human agent has sensory organs, right? What if agent replace the camera? If cameras, so a robot's AI, its eyes are its cameras. In fact, anytime you talk about cameras, you need to look at how. Um, the eyes work, so they replace it. A software agent has encoded bit strings as its programs and actions. So yeah, in software we have you know, you know data structures in there and stuff that allow it to know that something has been something has happened, an input has been made, and so a necessary action needs to take place. All right, the environment. Some programs operate entirely artificial environment. And of course, as opposed to a natural environment, draft our systems, character output on the screen, that environment. Are you okay? So let's take note of that. Okay, AI with Python. So we're talking about that slightly mammal, is it reptile here, yeah. known as the Python. Python is just a programming language and it's just a name that's been given to it. We can go into its history, but we don't have time for that. Straight away, why do we need Python? You can't get into AI if you don't like programming. You can't get into AI if you don't have an idea how programming works and the fundamentals of it. And so Python is another programming language and it's so kind of, it's one of the state of the art programming languages today, object oriented programming that is very good for you, are you okay? So, it, it, because it has certain characteristics and attributes, that's why we wanna go for Python, are you okay? It's sim it has a simple syntax, it need less coding to, to use it. Um, it has inbuilt libraries for AI objects. It's open source, it's free, okay? Yeah, that tomato sauce down there, mm, yummy, right? Can be used for broad range of programming. So Python works very well on the web, works well with other programming, you know, creating interfaces, etc. So we can go into all that. But yeah, that's why Python is so uh, good for AI. All right. So now the built-in libraries, let's look at them. We have what we call the NumP, NumPy, <laughs> SciPy, Matplotlib, Lib, NLTPK, Simple AI. These are libraries. When we talk about libraries, we're talking about object libraries. In other words, they are pre-built. Are you okay? Pre written scripts that can be used to achieve. For example, we don't have to write an algorithm to find the mean. Are you okay? Or the standard deviation of sort of numbers. All that can be hidden in the library. Is that all right? Okay, so yeah, features of Python easy to learn, easy to read, easy to maintain. A broad standard library. Interactive mode is portable, it's extendable. There are database connections that can be made to Python, are you okay? It's, it has GUI programming as well, so that instead of you doing just command line, you can actually do and your normal graphical user interface, you can have that, are you okay? It's also scalable, that means that we can, you know, extend it and, you know, the whole of possibilities with it, Python. So, talking about more important features of Python, it supports functional and structured programming methods as well as, Object-oriented programming, are you okay? All right, it can be used as scripting language. Yeah, you can use Python at a certain level where it's not like the actual basic uh, Python, yeah, core, but then you are using it as a scripting language in another program, all right? It provides very high-level dynamic data types, are you okay? High-level dynamic data types. High-level high level in computer means easy. Low-level means, you know, more, 
complex. Let me put it that way. It supports automatic garbage collection. Okay, so talking about uh, resource management, it can be easily integrated with C, C++, COM, ActiveX, COBA. We need what we call interoperability. These days, you don't joke with that. There should be a way for it to work with other programs. It's very key and important. So that if you're working in any software in, in your field, finance, uh, business, engineering, then you may have a software that should allow Python code easily work with that. Okay, so that's the idea of easily working. AI with Python, machine learning is very key. We can define machine learning. Let's look at machine learning. We can define machine learning as follows. It may be defined as the field of computer science, more specifically in application of artificial intelligence, which provides computer systems the ability to learn with data and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. In other words, I can work with data without understanding algorithm. Let's see, let's look at writing a program to find a straight line, to actually to work on a straight line. Are you okay? Why equal to mx plus c? You know, I can't write, I don't have to put it on the board. But then that can be deduced from data. So, and, and, and I can obtain a better model. Instead of me writing a program, I can work straight with data. So you see, we, can, we have shifted more to data in the era that we're in than to algorithm itself, especially in AI. All right, so there we go. We can talk about machine learning. We have two types of machine learning. We have supervised and unsupervised. Let me tell you something. Supervised means that there's a supervisor. <laughs> and then unsupervised means there's no supervised supervision. That was the machine learns on its own. But then the supervised makes sure that there is some kind of training data. Are you okay? So I want to tell you that this is cloth. This is wood. You're telling it and then it's learning from it. All right. There are some labels. Supervised machine learning is algos. Okay algorithms. Most common machine learning algorithms, we can talk about grouping it into classification and we talk about regression. Are you okay? So regression, classification, there are two different things. So a problem is called classification problem when we have categories, like classes. Are you okay? And regression problem is when we have real value output such as distance, kilogram, etc. Are you okay? In other words, Regression allows me to find a value. Are you okay? When it, there should be a certain relationship. All right, let's move on. Uh, supervised machine learning, that's going to be interesting, and that's what we ideally want. For robots, for example, the robot should be able to learn on its own, if it can. Anyway, most common machine learning algorithms are linear regression, decision tree, I repeated linear regression over there, vector support vector machine SVM, naive bias, k um, neighbors, yeah, <laughs> Bayesian networks. I mean, that's that's you know, another field, but naive bias reminds me of that. All right, so these are all algorithms. Are you all right? Machine learning algorithms. You can just implement them and get them going. All right, so we can also talk about the random forest algorithm. So it's a supervised classification algorithm. Let's look at random first. The advantage of a random first algorithm is that it can be used for both classification and regression kind of problems. Basically, it's a collection of decision trees, or you can say a symbol of decision trees. The decisions that are being made, do that, do that, do that, do that. Yeah, that's decision tree. All right, do this, do this, do that, do that. Okay, great. And then, um, yeah, so random forest algorithm, I like it. That's why I put it in. So practically, if you want to use AI with Python, then you need to prepare the data. So for example, what we are looking at here is a data set that has been arranged in the form of an array, a multi-dimensional array, like a matrix form, all right? And then in this, you can see how values are being uh, rep actually representing attributes, if you like, are you okay? Or what, is, what we call a feature vector. So every row in there is called a feature vector. So let's learn some new terminologies. The feature vector defines an object. Are you okay? Example, time, temperature, amount. Let's say if time, temperature, and amount can combine for me to determine that a room is too hot or something like that, then the feature vector in this data set now makes sense. And then with this input data, I can now begin to do some calculations. I can now begin to make some decisions. The computer can make some decisions. Are you okay? So it's all about data. AI is all about data. 
Are you okay? Now, pre-processing the data, we need to convert it into meaningful data. And data pre-processing steps should be followed. Are you okay? And techniques for data pre-processing include binarization, mean removal, scaling, normalization. And then we can get to labeling the data, which also relates to being able to now train the data. It's like we train the data. Okay, you can imagine that if I'm labeling the data that I'm putting to it, if a data that goes to the computer has to be numerical, are you okay? It's very important. So all these things that you're seeing here as prepositions, that means that we are converting data into a form that can be used. So I'll let I'll end it in here, and then when I continue with my next video, I'll explain further how you go ahead and then create something more interesting. Okay, so um, yep, thanks so much, and then uh, see you in the next video. Please subscribe. Thank you.